Anyway, now that we talked to Fennel, we can finally move on past Triton City and maybe catch ourselves some new Pokemon. Our team could definitely use some uh, new partners in here. Route three, boys. Oh my God. This is suddenly the memories are flooding back. Like I was talking about earlier, I don't remember black and white all that well, but as we're slowly playing through it, I'm like, everything is suddenly flooding back like boomerang. It's all coming back to you. So here we got the daycare and I'm pretty sure next door we can battle like a bunch of little kids. I know that sounds weird, but I mean, it's Pokemon, you know, basically we're always fighting little kids. <laughs> Are they in here or are they the ones outside? Let's find out. Hello, friends. Um, your Pokemon, they don't seem to be healthy. Oh, but they're, they're totally fine. What are you talking about, lady? What? Okay. Seriously, guys are all just little boys. Can we confirm or deny this? Chat, what are we thinking? Is it true? Are all guys just little boys? Just a bunch of man children pretending to be adults? What? None of these kids want to battle, though. What the frick? I guess they might be the ones outside, then? Oh my god, yes they are! Hello! Well, well, well. Probably should switch Charlie back up to first in the team, actually. Took me a while to realize this is not the actual Pokémon Black and White. <laughs> Damn, potato! I think you're embracing the potato-ness a little too much today, man. Gotta snap out of it. <laughs> no offense. It's, it's, it's only joke, man. It's only joke. Recently lost my Ultra Sun cartridge that had the decks completed and all the mons from previous games. Damn. See, and this is why I'm glad that Pokemon games save on the DS now instead of on the cartridge. Or I guess on the Switch, technically. Because it's a lot harder to lose a Switch than it is to lose a cartridge. And I mean, it can be kind of inconvenient sometimes since you can't like easily transfer your save file or make like copies of it or anything, but yeah, it's, uh, that's rough, man. There's an up, there's ups and downsides to it basically nowadays with the game saving on the Switch instead. And I mean, if you have a modded Switch, there's still ways for you to like transfer your save file and stuff, so I guess it's not the end of the world, but then again, modding your Switch isn't exactly all that easy, so. I'm a little big boy. <laughs> Aren't we all, debacle? Aren't we all? Just little big boys and oh my god. No, we missed! Oh! Jojo! Jojo's dead! This is sad. I knew I should have kept Charlie up first. Or I guess just switching him up. That's fine though, I mean, we don't have the EXP share yet. At least I don't think so. Wait, do we actually have the EXP share? Hold up. I don't see a lie. <laughs> We're actually all baby men. Unless, you know, you're the 1% female that watches my streams and videos. Okay, it's actually more like a 10%, but still, it's, it's pretty low. So if you're one of the females, then you're safe. But every guy in here right now, we're all just a bunch of babies. I don't even know if we're going to be able to take down this Pan Sage though. With the Vine Whip, it's literally Charon's rival battle all over again, dude. Oh my god, is it going to come down to Muna? Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's going to come down to Muna, dude. So I'm pretty sure, yep, that Vine Whip will take us out. At least this is this trainer's last Pokemon. So all we got to do is finish off this Pan Sage and we'll survive. Please, Lick. Please don't kill us. Oh god. We're fine. Hell yeah. Long time watcher of your YouTube. Nice to see you on here. Nice to see you too, Benji. Thank you for the sub again, dude. All right, so we're healed up. We're good to go. You guys reminded me that apparently the lady in the daycare heals us up, so we didn't even need to go all the way back to the Pokemon Center, but we did get that mail, which I guess is good too. Oh yeah, I want to put Charlie up first as well. That's actually so convenient how you can just... Uh, drag the Pokemon on the sidebar here to like switch them around. Well, I guess not when we're in battle. But yeah, I love the convenience of just being able to like drag your Pokemon around on the sidebar there. Not when we're in battle, obviously, but like when we're out of it, all it takes is a little click and drag instead of having to go through a whole menu. Wonder how many fans Munch has all over the world. I'm from Philippines, by the way. 
I mean, I guess there's 1.2 million of them, right? <laughs> it'd be, it would have to be close to a million people. Like, I know that a lot of people probably have two or three accounts that they've subscribed with. So it's not technically 1.2 mil, but there's got to be like at least a million people that have heard of my name. Even if they don't watch anymore, because like obviously I'm not getting a million views every video, but the fact that there's still a million people subscribed means that there's probably at least that many people that have heard of my name or have watched my videos at some point. So yeah, there's definitely people all over the world and that makes me happy, man. I would love to do like a world tour someday. I don't think I'm big enough for that, but I mean, just me naturally traveling around the world. Like I definitely want to, hopefully when the whole Corona situation ends, I want to travel more. And whenever I do go to like another country or a major city, like I'm going to try to do more fan meetups for you guys. Cause I've never really delivered on the fan meetups, uh, but I have some good ideas for stuff that I could do. So yeah, that'd be fun to do. I mean, maybe even, well, I guess not tomorrow, but Pokemon Go Fest is happening tomorrow as of the day I'm recording this. So maybe like it's not exactly the best time to be outside, but I might run into some of you guys. I don't know if you're in Chicago and you're going to be playing Pokemon Go Fest, then I might see you around. Ooh, I like how it highlights our Pokemon actually in double battles. It's pretty cool. And it highlights the enemy, letting you know that Incinerate actually does hit both opponents on the enemy side of the field. Legend of Korra just got confirmed for Netflix in August. I saw that earlier, actually, in the week. I think it was confirmed a couple days ago, but yeah. I'm hyped, dude. I actually, uh... I, I don't want to say that I like Korra more than Avatar, but I still liked it. I wasn't, like, a hater like a lot of people were, you know? At least the first few seasons I was a big fan of. Later on, not so much, but, like, the first two seasons, or at least the first one, I liked it. It wasn't really until they got later in Korra and they started putting a lot more CGI in it. And I mean, it wasn't really the CGI that turned me off from the show. It was actually more so the story. What the heck? Oh my god, another rival battle? You gotta be kidding me! We both have a trio badge, so let's see which of us is stronger. Third rival battle against Charon, dude. Why? <laughs> Why are there so many rival battles in black and white? This is crazy. This has got to be, so far, the most rival battles, at least this early on in a Pokemon game, right? I feel like in any other game, even in Sun and Moon, it feels like you battle how every two steps, but there's not nearly this many rival battles. This is insane. Yeah, I'm doing good, Lightning. It was a pretty good day, wrapping it up with some Pokey MMO and chill with the boys. I talked about my day earlier, but I guess uh, it wasn't during the playthrough, so I'll, I'll say it again for you guys, but we actually went out to this sunflower field today, and I'd never actually been in one of those before or any, like, farmland, like, legit. You know, my grandparents are, like, uh, in Texas, my aunt and uncle have, like, a little farm with, like, some horses and chickens, but it's not, like, they're not farmers for a living, you know, but today we, like, legit went to a real farm where that's like the people that live there. That's like their livelihood. They, they run the farm. I'm like over explaining the simplest thing. But yeah, they also, um, aside from like their farm animals and their crops, they have like a sunflower maze, which was really cool to go through. And like, I'd never actually seen sunflowers that close, like in person, I guess. I don't think they have sunflowers in Puerto Rico. Maybe they do, but I'd never seen them up that close. And it was pretty nice. What was that about? I don't know. Bianca, oh my god. She's lagging behind, dude. Where were those people headed? That way, but... Why are you running? <laughs> Why are you running? My queen! It'll be okay. Don't cry. Uh-oh. Bianca, really? Why are you running? <laughs> you have to hear this. Those people stole this girl's Pokemon. You should have spoken up sooner. We're gonna get that Pokemon back. Please stay by the girl's side. All right, let's get it. Yeah, we got a mail from Arculus. You killed my Pampor. I hope you know that I will get revenge. Oh my God, looks like we've made ourselves a little bit of a rival here in Poke MMO already. Arculus, dude. Maybe we got to rebattle after the second gym. 
I'm going to try to take on different people, though. I mean, but at some point, we can definitely rebattle Arculus when we get more Pokemon on our teams and everything. And speaking of, we might just be able to catch ourselves something new here as we've got a wild Blitzel popping up. 330 gifted subs. Some rich kid will beat me. I think people would assume that of you, Steven, if they saw just that you gifted that many. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Someone that isn't... It's not their own money, I guess. <laughs> I know you work hard for the stuff that you gift, and I really appreciate that. I mean, we actually, we don't know where Dakota got the money either, but... I appreciate both of you so much for uh, the support as we've got ourselves a Blitzel. All right, we got a Repel over here. And you know what I just remembered too? Uh, shaking grass is a thing in this game. At least in the original black and white. So I wonder if like shaking grass is a thing in Poke MMO too. I feel like it's not because we haven't seen it so far, but... The reason I remembered it is because around this route is the first time I ever encountered an Audino in the wild. And those things are like basically EXP farms, but you only get them in the shaking grass, so... I'm not sure if that's a feature, but... Lord, oh my god! Get out! Get, get out of here! No! We totally missed the first half of the evolution animation! Because Charlie is about to become... A Duat! Oh, this brings back so many memories, too. They're all flooding back to me. Both from the Volt White Nuzlocke and my original Pokemon uh, Black and White playthrough. I love Duat, dude. I'm not as big of a fan of Asha or uh, Samurott. Wait, you know what I just realized? How come our Pokemon's not following us? Is that a thing you get later or maybe when you go to Heart Gold or something? Because I've noticed for a lot of other people, the Pokemon follows them around, but not for us. So I wonder if that's something that happens later in black and white, or maybe we're supposed to go to another region. I guess we'll find out. But right now, we ain't got nobody following us. I wish that we had Charlie behind us. That'd be nice. At least Charlie's still on our team, and he's definitely going to help us out here against Team Plasma once again. Gotta love that Team Plasma theme. Hey, what's up, Fennykins? Welcome to the stream. And James Good, welcome as well. Hope you guys enjoy your stay. Playing some Pokey MMO today. Who's this munching orange everyone keeps talking about? I never heard of him. Yeah, I don't know, man. My freaking twin cousin. People always... I can never step out of the shadow of my twin brother, the munch. I will forever be not him, I guess. I don't know. Whoa, how could we lose when we have a right to awesome. awesome. Back in the game we go. As you can see when we hit select follower, the species of Pokemon is too shy to come out of the ball. <laughs> That's the way they like try to hide it. That I guess they don't have the animations. Oh wait, Muna has it. What the frick? For some reason Muna has one, but the other Pokemon don't. Oh, maybe because Muna already... Yeah, Muna has an overworld sprite since we literally saw it outside earlier. So you know what? At least we get Muna. How could we lose when we have right on our side? Not bad, young Citrus. Go return the Pokemon to that girl. You don't need to return it. Oh my god, more grunts? How troublesome. Not only do you fail to understand, but you actually got in our way to boot. And there's two of you and two of us. We'll show you our combined power and teach you that we're right. Okay, come on. We know exactly how this is going to end. Let's just... Let's just jump into it, guys. No lie, my Pat Rat was following. I guess Pat Rat must have a Overworld Sprite too then. And speaking of Pat Rat, we're actually taking one on right now with our newly evolved Duat. Got the Razor Shell. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to one-shot with that now. Oh yeah, that is some power on the Charlie there. I love it. You Nova Pokemon are socially awkward. <laughs> That's a good way to put it too. Maybe they're just a little shy, like the like the game said. I guess socially awkward and shy are pretty close together. Not exactly the same, but... Can you make part two of the anime characters as Pokemon? I got you, dude. Next month, though. Not... Well, I mean, July is almost over. But yeah, in August, for sure, there will be an episode two of that series. And I have another idea for something kind of similar, where instead of 
making the anime characters themselves into Pokemon, like I would try to build them a Pokemon team instead. That might be an idea for later though, like I'll definitely do a part two of this series already though or sooner, before the new stuff, but be aware of how this Pokemon suffers from being used by people. Someday open your eyes to your own complicity. Y'all need to stop talking, unless you're ready to like, not keep your Pokemon in Pokeballs anymore. And y'all just need to shut up, Team Plasma. <laughs> I was about to call him Team Flare, which I guess is not close at all, actually. They're similar in ideals, I guess, but definitely not appearance-wise. Over here we got TM for Thief, not bad. We got our little Muna following us as you can see. We didn't actually catch a Pat Rat earlier. Oh, there it is. Someone's got a Pat Rat following them. Oh, it's Debacle. Nice, dude. <laughs> Definitely uh, someone I've seen in the stream chat a couple times now. But yeah, I guess just Pokemon that have overworld sprites can follow you, so... Everything up to Gen 4 and then some of the Gen 5 Pokemon, but not all of them. Kind of sad. Like, I wish that we could have our duo following us. I feel like they could definitely implement that in the future. It would just take a little bit of extra work to program it, I guess. But I would hope to see it in the future if there's going to be new updates. I'm going to see this girl on her way. See you later. Bye bye. For now, though, we're going to keep on heading through the next route. Now I actually remember, yeah, this is the first route that I remember you encountering Blitzel. I didn't realize that it was the same route as the other one. Uh, yeah, you can actually see the Pokemon right here, James. They're a little bit small, but you can see our whole team there on the right side. We got Duwat. I forgot what this one is. Panseer, right? Not Pansage. Pansage is the grass one. So you got Panseer, Muna, and Blitzel. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to play on the Pocket Pixel server, John. I do want to play some more Pixelmon and possibly on a server though, so I'm just not sure which server we're going to play on yet. But yeah, Pixelmon I think might be next stream. Probably just going to play Persona tonight because I want to get more done in that game as well. I don't know, I guess I'm just like actually getting into Persona now, so I really just want to play more of the game. And it's such a long game that I feel like if I don't play it almost every stream or every night that I stream, then we're not going to make much progress. What do you want the next evil team to be? I know you asked the chat rescue squad, but I personally... I don't have any specifics for what I want. I just, I hope that the next evil team isn't a joke, you know? Like, we've had two generations in a row now where the evil teams have been kind of not actually evil. Like, Team Skull, they were cool. I actually like Team Skull a lot, but... There was never a point where I was actually scared of Team Skull in the games. Not that we're supposed to be scared, like it's a kid's game, but they never felt like a threat, you know what I mean? And then... Team Yell, I mean, Team Yell was literally a joke. Like... There was the Ether Paradise, I guess, in Sun and Moon. Ether Paradise was closer to a traditional evil team. But even that, I don't know, it felt kind of forced like making Lusamine be the villain just because Team Skull was actually more lighthearted like it felt very uh yeah force I guess is the best word that I can come up with it wasn't a very good twist I gotta say either like I think almost everybody saw it coming that Lusamine was gonna end up being evil so I just hope that we get something more straightforward but with a better story like Getsis is the perfect example actually we saw from the very beginning of the game Getsis lays out what Team Plasma's ideals are what they stand for and you know what like why you're fighting them in the game they want to liberate Pokemon by any means necessary so I would like to see something similar to that where I guess it's more serious but not overly complicated like, Team Plasma's story, yeah, I, I, that's exactly how I would describe it. It's got a darker tone, but it's not so serious that it doesn't fit in a kid's game, you know? I would just love to see a return to, like, a bit more traditional, but still something new. Like, I'm sure that Pokemon can come up with some twist on the old formula. They always manage to do it somehow. 
And by that, I mean they stick to exactly the same formula as always. But, you know, we can hope for a better evil team, I guess. <laughs> Even if it was something like Mar or Maxi and Archie, where they're not super serious, but they can still have their scary moments. Just as long as it's, I mean, even Guzma, I can't hate on Guzma, that's the thing. I'm saying I want something more serious, but I actually really like Team Skull. Team Yellow is trash. I don't think anybody can disagree on that one. Like, maybe you guys like Team Yell as a concept, but as an evil team, they were trash. They like, barely did anything. The one cool part was seeing their town, like, what was it called? Pl Plymouth? Pl something like that. Plymouth City? Spike Moth. Spike Moth City, which was basically Team Yell City. That was the only cool part about it, and even that wasn't all that great. It was literally just a hallway with an arena at the end of it. So yeah, they could definitely do more. Okay, but Lysander was an easy prediction too. Team Flare and this guy with majestic giant red hair comes along. Come on. I didn't say Lysander wasn't easy to predict. I'm just saying. At least they were an evil team. They weren't like just a couple hooligans having fun, messing around, you know. Like the last two generations. Even though Team Flare was also pretty, I guess, lighthearted. Like the way they would do their little poses and they were all about like high fashion they were goofy i guess is a good word for it like all the last three generations have had goofy evil teams i want to see them go back to having something serious i also i haven't pointed it out yet i did notice earlier but um we can't or this game is on set battle style by default i'm not sure that you can actually change it because there's no regular menu button so what I mean by that is whenever you beat up like an enemy's Pokemon and then, you know, they want to switch out to something else. Usually the game tells you like they're sending out this Pokemon. Do you want to switch? This game does not have that. You literally just the next Pokemon comes out. So it's a little bit more like competitive battling. And I actually don't mind that, especially for gym, since they're a little bit tougher too. the AI has been improved. Their Pokemon levels and stuff have probably all been improved. So. I don't mind the fact that it's set. It definitely feels a little bit more challenging. Uh, but yeah, this guy, I mean, I thought he was actually going to give us something for answering, but apparently not. Charon? Again? I never would have guessed. Yes, Average, this is an actual MMO. Not officially by Pokemon, but you can download it yourself if you Google Poke MMO. Use these if you want. Nice, dude! Chesto berries! I can't wait to never use one. Nacreen's leader is, of course, a normal type, so it would be nice to have some fighting power, fighting type Pokemon. We don't have any yet, but uh, this guy actually trades, right? Oh my! What a lovely trainer! You're Charlie! It's very friendly towards you! Oh, wait, what? I thought this person traded Petalil for Whimsicott. I guess not. Huh. Oh wait, no, it's this lady, wow. It's Petalil for Cottony, not Whimsicott, because that's the evolution. Cool. I wonder if that's different depending on if you put in Pokemon white or black as your base ROM. Because I know in whatever the opposite version, she would ask for a Cottony instead, and then give you a Petalil. I also wonder if there's version exclusive still even, depending on what ROM you loaded up. Because when you first boot Poke MMO, it asks you for either Pokemon white or black. It doesn't actually like care which one you use. So I wonder if like the version exclusives are a thing, depending on which ROM you load it up. Let's explore a little bit of Nacreen though. Maybe head on up to the forest because I think you can actually catch a fighting type over there. Probably like uh, Timpole, I think that's its name. Dire Hit and Unova, it's called Dire Hit, huh? No difference. Anyway. Cool. <laughs> Why is he telling us about it if there's literally no difference? Or maybe like that is different in the original games, like they might have changed the name of it. I don't think so though, but wait, what? What does this guy want? Oh, he's a tutor. Oh, it's literally just sleep talk. And it costs two silk scarves. What? Why do we need what? Okay. Maybe because like once you beat all the regions, you'll have a million silk scarves. I don't I don't I actually don't know why that's what it costs 
to teach a Pokemon a move, but yeah, I picked Oshawott and I technically I have it. I mean, it evolved, but nice. We get Mystic Water. I wonder if we would have gotten any of them if we answered incorrectly. Oh, I thought maybe we could get another one from her. That's fine, though. Berg is an artist and also the leader of Castilia. Wait, I thought he said he wants to kill him. <laughs> he says he wants to be like him. Bro, that would have been definitely a uh, twist. I'm going to kill that damn clown. Timber. Oh, oh yeah. Timber, not Timple. See, I knew something sounded wrong there. Oh my goodness. I'm forgetting all my Pokemon names, guys. I'm officially a Poke Boomer. There's nothing I can do about it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm 25 years old now. It's it all going. It's only downhill from here <laughs> in terms of remembering Pokemon names, I guess. But yeah, Timber, not Timple, the early fighting Pokemon of Unova. Unova was really cool, actually. I don't know how you guys feel in like hindsight, but I actually really like the fact that Black and White 1 only had the new Pokemon because they hadn't done that since like what? Hoenn region and even in Hoenn they had Pokemon from older generations, so it was basically like a reboot to the series, like the new first gen. And they had a lot of Pokemon that actually kind of looked like, well, to put it this way, like if Unova had come out in the modern day, there would have been a lot of Unovan forms, like regional variants. Like Buffalon is basically Unovan Tauros, Swoobat is basically Unovan Zubat. That actually would have been a lot cooler because a lot of those Pokemon, I feel like, yeah, it was cool at the time that they were new and it was kind of like trying to reboot a new first gen. But it would have been even cooler if they would have been Unovan forms. Because I mean, I, I guess it is kind of repetitive, you know, like having two Pokemon so similar, like Buffalo and Tauros. I mean, we already had Miltank. We don't need a third freaking cow Pokemon. The more the merrier though, right? I don't know. I guess I'm kind of... I was gonna say I like it, but now I'm, I'm thinking... I'm hesitating. I'm like kind of in the middle. Like, was it actually a good choice or was it a bad choice to only have new Pokemon? What do you guys think? Oh, there's no hidden items? Oh, there are. I was about to say, that is obviously a spot for a hidden item. If we didn't get one, I would have been very confused, but... I guess back in the day, I didn't like it. Now, I don't mind it as much since obviously we have Black and White 2. If you want to play a Unova game with like all the Pokemon, you can. But when Black and White first came out, yeah, it was kind of annoying that there were no old Pokemon until the post game. And even then, it was like only a select few, but what the heck? How come these trainers aren't spotting us anymore? We actually have to talk to them for them to battle us, I guess. I'm so sad I can't figure out how to install this. Oh, I'm sorry, Samurai. There might be a tutorial on YouTube if you want to, like, look that up real quick. For any of you guys that can't figure it out, I mean, all you need to do is download the client from PokeMMO.eu, uh, install that, and it'll tell you which ROMs you need to get the game working. So after that, you just have to find the ROMs yourself. I'm not going to link you guys any ROMs, but... Come on, I thought we were big boys in the chat. We can figure it out. <laughs> There's also the Discord, if uh, you guys don't know. Uh, the Munching Orange fan Discord, which might pop up in the chat soon. Maybe you can ask someone in there, like, for ROMs or whatever. Because I'm not going to give them to you directly. But I mean, if you share them with each other, that's a nice little uh, loophole there. I just enjoyed the fact that Black and White was faster than Diamond and Pearl. Hey, if that was like your main concern with Diamond and Pearl, then yeah, that was a big, big improvement. I love the animated sprites too. Like, I think Platinum had slightly animated sprites, but it wasn't as crazy as Black and White, right? Did Platinum have animated sprites? I don't remember now. I don't think it did. I think it's just when they first pop up in battle, they're a little animated, but they're not like always moving. Like in Black and White. That was definitely my favorite thing uh, when Black and White first came out. Man, those sprites, they were actually impressive. Isn't that crazy that, like, it was only or less than 10 years ago, but back then, those sprites were actually impressive. Now it's just, like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they're still kind of impressive. Like, I, I prefer the sprite artwork to the 3D models, even to this day. 
But that's just personal preference, you know? Like, I would have loved to see a world where Pokemon stuck with uh, the sprite artwork. And, like, maybe now we'd have, like, almost painted, hand-drawn looking Pokemon games where the sprites are so detailed and so nice that they almost look like a custom drawing. I would love that, man. In an alternate reality, that happened, guys. Pokemon never went 3D. We would have probably missed out on some awesome Pokemon designs because I feel like the only reason we get such crazy and, like, unique, I guess, Pokemon nowadays, like Incineroar or Greninja that end up being fan favorites is because the games are 3D. So I wouldn't change it. I, I still like the fact that we went 3D, but it would be cool to see an alternate reality where Pokemon just stuck with doing sprites to the maximum. What's up, Tifa Shepard? Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Oh my goodness. We took one step and already we got another Pokemon popping up, but it's actually the one I was looking for. As finally, we're going to find Timba. And that reminds me, I said I was going to nickname some Pokemon after you guys. We're going to get him, or we're going to nickname him after the uh, most recent subs. So one of them is definitely going to be Dakota. Maybe this Timber actually could be Dakota, because I, I don't know about Blitzel yet. We might end up keeping Blitzel on the team. We might not, but Timber definitely is going on the team. Since it'll be a lot of help against the first gym. I'm um, thinking we're probably going to explore the rest of this route, though, before we just go take on the leader. Kind of want to train our Timber, too, since we just got it. Uh, we're going to be Dakota. And we'll put you up first. Oh, I guess we got to close this first. All right, nice. Actually, we do have potions, so we might as well use those right now. Before we make a huge mistake and get into this battle with 2 HP. I'm brave and bold. Let's get right into the news. I mean, the battle. Not the, there's, there's no nudes here. I still stand, by the way. Ash should have won the Pokemon League in X and Y. That's the one thing that I cannot defend Sun and Moon for, you know? They finally gave our boy Ash a win, but it's like this weird Benjamin Button Ash that somehow went back in time to like when he was 10. Even if you look past that and, and you just don't care about Ash aging, like, you know, maybe you're one of those people that says Ash never ages. He's just like an ageless character. He's just always 10. Whatever, even if you look at it like that, I felt that X and Y was the peak of like serious battling Ash. And then you get to Sun and Moon and it's more like about gimmicks, like making each battle feel unique and like fun. Not like him just winning or wanting to win so badly. Like in Alola, I don't think Ash really cares whether he wins or not, to be honest. And then he ends up winning it. When in X and Y, he was set up perfectly to win, dude. And it would have been like the completion of that arc. At least if you believe in Ash aging. It felt like design-wise and animation, like the art style, Ash looked older in X and Y. Like it could have actually, it felt like he was aging throughout the years. All those regions he visited. And finally in X and Y, he would have been like, I don't know, 14 or 15 or something. It would have been perfect to end off that like arc of Ash growing up and finally winning a Pokemon League. Instead, we got Sun and Moon where it's like basically just a joke and he's back to being 10 for some reason. And he's not even trying half the time and somehow there's not even a Pokemon League in Alola, dude. That was the first Pokemon League ever. He's the first champion ever. Like, I don't disagree that he should have won in Alola. I think he should have won both, to be honest. They should have gained the win in X and Y, and then also, if they wanted to, in Sun and Moon. But at the same time, I understand why he didn't win in X and Y, because if you actually watch the episodes after the Pokemon League in X and Y, uh, with the whole Team Flare and the Zygarde storyline, the guy that Ash got beat by, Elaine or Alan, or however you say his name with the Mega Charizard X, he ends up kind of becoming like the villain, sort of, like anti-hero type of character, like a rival. And if they had had Ash win, I think it still could have worked actually, because they could have made Alan go full evil. 
rather than be like a rival slash anti-hero. Like imagine if Ash beat him and Alan got so depressed. He's like, damn, I put all my power, all my work and training into Charizard and he still wasn't enough to beat Greninja's Ash and Greninja because of their battle bond. Dude, it would have been perfect actually because like Ash is all about building a genuine friendship with your Pokemon, whereas Alan was more like Gary, like pure power. He didn't like treat his Pokemon like shit, you know, but he wouldn't really be all that nice either. Or, well, I mean, he kind of was like him and Charizard seem like good buddies, but still with Mega Evolution, you know, the whole thing with Mega Evolution is that you're kind of like forcing your Pokemon to gain more power, not naturally. So it would have been a nice like, like a balance, like, you know, no matter what, the power of friendship comes out on top, which is why Ash beats him. And then Alain like breaks down and he's like, damn, even after I poured all of my training and all of my soul and energy into trading Charizard, it still wasn't enough. So like he snaps and like goes full evil. But then like towards the end, he repents or like has the redemption arc and helps Ash take down, you know, like Lysander. I think it would have been a nice story, but whatever, man. I want to see things no one can see. The truths of Pokemon inside balls. What? What? The ideals of how trainers should be in a future where Pokemon have become perfect. Do you feel the same? That's so. I think my friends and I should test to see if you can see this future too. Oh, damn. Got our first rival battle against Pokemon Trainer N. Those of you that have watched my channel for a long time should know my history with N. It goes way back, man. Me and N. We're buddies, you know. That guy I was talking about earlier back in like middle school, it was actually N the whole time. He's just been pixelated and trapped in a video game. And this is the real reason he wants to liberate Pokemon is because he's actually trapped in the video game himself. So he gets it. If anyone's gonna get it, it's N. What if that was actually part of the story somehow? Like, N is a self-aware character. He knows he's in a video game. So, he, and he knows that all the Pokemon are trapped in the game too. So he wants to liberate them from the game. <laughs> That'd be crazy, man. I actually do like N though. I love his story. And I mean, I guess we're going to get to see it throughout our little Poke MMO adventure here. I shouldn't call it little. This is anything but little, dude. We're going to be going through... Basically every region up till 5th gen. Eventually, like it's probably going to take us a long time, but if we at least do like two gyms per stream, then it shouldn't be that bad. Hey, Dakota with the buy, dude. Oh my God. That is exactly how I lost my Blaze Black or Volt White Nuzlocke right there. The Biting Timber, or actually it was Fungus, but... Wait, it killed our timber too. It was a fungus that killed our timber. Oh my, why do you have pursuit? Freaking little peed up with pursuit out here, dude. You gotta be kidding me. And that was like not very effective and it still killed us, bro. Come on. That just makes me sad. Oh, it's because it was Zorua. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Because I like a peed up with pursuit. Yeah, that was weird to begin with. And then. The fact that it killed us was even weirder. How you been? Right now, my friends aren't strong enough to save all Pokemon. Maybe I can't solve the equation that will change the world. So I need power. Power enough to make anyone agree with me. Now I know what power I need. Reshiram! The legendary Pokemon that along with the hero created the Unova region. It's my turn to become that hero. And you and I will be friends. Damn, right from the beginning, I didn't realize he actually mentions Regiram.